So any of the tips that I use today um, are good for all levels of use. Um, definitely any beginners or experience levels, some things people realize, some people don't. Um, so yeah, my, so this tip is good for anybody. So this tip has got to do with the sketch expert that a lot of people don't realize lives within SolidWorks. Um, when they have problems with their sketches, they have to pull their hair. Sometimes it goes gray. Sometimes they get a little bald like myself. Um, but it is because they don't understand how easy it can be to fix an error with a sketch. You could actually use the status bar. Status bar is a great tool in itself and another tip and trick because it'll tell you if things are fully, fully defined, undefined, and other things. In this uh, situation, the status bar, which is down at the bottom, says there's no solution found, and it's red and yellow. So it's telling us something's wrong. You can click the, the no solutions found, and it will pull up on the left side in your properties manager, the sketch expert. Now, when you open the Sketch Expert by clicking on that, you can hit Diagnose. Now, SolidWorks is going to diagnose that for you. As you can see, it's finding solutions for what may be wrong. And it's telling us there are 21 possible scenarios in order to fix this. Now, sometimes it doesn't go that many. Sometimes it's only a few. I've seen somewhere that's only four. And then it allows you to skip through each solution until you find the one that correlates with what you need to have done. So anything from moving or deleting one dimension and centering it up to, to help with that vertical alignment or getting rid of the light to get all together, um, blowing up some other dimensions. But you can cycle through those, and when you find the one that you need, maybe it's this one, maybe I just need to get rid of the vertical relationship, I can hit accept, and it'll go ahead and solve that for me. Now, one other tip and trick, and I'll go ahead and throw that vertical relationship back in there and click it again, is that there's always a, a dialog box that you can check. Now, you can do it here. You can do it when it's in diagnose mode, either one. And if this is checked, anytime you have a sketch error, it will automatically pull up the sketch expert. So this will help you solve a lot of other sketches or sketch issues and um, simplify that process for you. All right, so we'll go with the second tip. We'll use um, select identical components. So with this tip of selecting identical components, the we use the selection tool. The selection tool has a lot of useful and powerful features within it that a lot of people don't realize. In this uh, example, we're going to actually hit select identical components. On the bottom of this floor assembly, we see that there's a lot of different parts and, and uh, components to it. We also see there's a lot of different weld nuts. Now, if you look inside of the feature tree here, these components, these weld nuts, can be scattered throughout there. And to highlight every one of them, maybe I need to change it, maybe I need to delete them, maybe I need to update it to a weld nut that our company's changed to, could be a little tedious. So using the select identical component and selecting one component, it will select all the components of that same nomenclature of that same name. So now instead of picking through the feature tree, it's done it for me. The next tip and trick that I'm gonna show is the power behind isolate. A lot of people use isolate. Isolate's a powerful tool. You can take it and say, well, there's a lot going on here, and I really only need to focus on this channel and this channel. And then I'll right-click, and I'll select Isolate. And now I'm left with just those two channels versus having to hide everything. Now, that's powerful in and of itself. But what other people don't realize is they kind of just go with the out-of-the-box thing. What does Isolate really do? Well, Isolate is nothing more then hide everything but what I've selected. So now if I use Control-Shift-Tab, I can come in and select, maybe I forgot to add another cross member to it. Maybe this trough needs to be shown. And so I can select these other items to display them. Maybe I want this panel to be shown, right? And so using that Control-Shift-Tab, just like when we use Tab to hide something or Tab to show something, we can use Control shift tab to display everything that's hidden and then select what we want to come back into that isolate. Another thing with isolate is if you hit the drop down, 
maybe we don't want everything hidden. Maybe we'd rather see it as a wireframe so we can see what all is going around it, as well as transparent, so we can still see those things, um, but have some a relationship or relevance to what we're doing around that. So the software itself is very powerful, um, and that alone is great, and it's a great tool to use. But what really makes SolidWorks uh, what it is for me is the community and the people behind it. So when you talk to SolidWorks, when you talk to R&D and they listen to you, when you have these communities like the Swuggin program that people are able to get together and be energized and energetic around the software, it builds relationship and t relationships and ties that are unparalleled to anything else. So ironswug.com, check it out. You can see where we're at. You can follow us. Brad Tank Metter is my colleague that I, we ride together and go around. He actually has a tracker on his bike, so you can even follow us through the route, through the website. You can tell us where you'd like to see us. But this year, we're going to Wisconsin. We're going to end in Arcadia at Betty Baker's Swug Group. We're going to go through Nashville, uh, Elizabethtown next to Louisville, Indianapolis, Chicago, and then Arcadia, Wisconsin. So it's going to be a, a long route, but we're going to enjoy every drive or every ride and every, every stop we make. So 